welcome, Greg, uh, to Coldly TV. And uh, we are at Villa Staff at Mallorca, and you just delivered your talk about versioning uh, event domains, mm -hmm. event sourcing. And we have some questions about your talk. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, you talked about how to deal with new versions of the same event. Yes. You first uh, show an approach of having multiple handles, handlers. What is the problem with that? Uh, so the problem that you run into with just adding a new version of the event, and in this case we were actually looking at using, let's say, a .NET or binary serializer. Mm -hmm. um, so I need the type in order to be able to deserialize things. Now, if I can take the system down and then bring the system back up, there's no problem. If I can take the whole system down, where it becomes a problem is if we have multiple versions of software running side by side, because the old version of the software or the old consumers won't actually be able to understand the new event that I write down at this point. Uh, so therefore, they won't be able to deserialize it because they don't actually know about the type. Okay, and you talk about the concept of ma mapping versus serializing. Yep. Could you explain a little bit about so it? So the basic idea is uh, you, you tend to head towards a, a concept known as weak schema, mm -hmm. where I don't actually have uh, as many guarantees associated with my serialization operations. Uh, however, I can be much more flexible with things. Uh, there's actually a third option here, which is known as hybrid schema, which is supported by some things such as uh, Google Protobufs, mm -hmm. um, where I can say some things are required and some things are not required. Will you talk about a transform stream? What is it? Yeah, so where we start running into stream transformations is when I've really screwed things up. Okay. I've written down events that maybe I shouldn't have written, or maybe I have a completely new way of looking at this existing thing. So it's the ability to read up the old stream, go through some transformation process, and I write the events down to a new stream, and then I may mark that the old stream is now invalidated so that I can actually run two versions side by side. Okay, and how do you deal with, for instance, uh, having multiple streams, I'm talking about Kafka streams or Kinesis yes. streams, uh, for the same aggregate? I mean, we can publish the, I don't know, customer address modified, updated, mm -hmm. to one stream and the other uh, customer event, like customer shipping address updated, yeah to other different stream. How do we deal with this kind of situation where the order is not guaranteed? Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways we can deal with this. Um, I would actually recommend going back and reading, well, to start reading at an old paper, uh, which is a classic distributed systems paper. Uh, it's Ordering Events in a Distributed System by Leslie Lamport, which was written in 1978. Um, one of the concepts he introduces there is a concept known as a, a Lamport clock. Okay. Um, which can allow you to actually show causal ordering between things that don't actually necessarily share time. Mm -hmm. um, today, you'd probably be more likely to use a um, vector clock as opposed to a Lampert sequence. And I spoke wrong. I didn't mean Lampert clock. I meant Lampert sequence. Um, and this allows you, even with disparate sets where I don't necessarily have ordering, that I can still build a causal ordering on top of it. Mm -hmm. Final question. Uh, could you please uh, elaborate a little bit about the trading system example that you mentioned before? So it's very common in when we start looking at these types of systems that they th there's some business cycle on top of it. Mm -hmm. So for example, for an accounting system, an accounting system has a year end uh, where they basically close the year. Mm -hmm. In situations like this, it's very useful to actually be able to come in, you migrate off the old system. And you basically take what the end state of the old system actually is as your starting point, mm -hmm. and then you move forward from there. Mm -hmm. um, this allows you to, for instance, shorten your overall log. Um, in our trading example, we did this once a day. Mm -hmm. And we actually started off by writing events of what are all my opening positions that basically I, I was left with yesterday. That's the concept of snapshots? You're or not doing snapshots because I still keep the logs in the back. It's just I don't okay. need to replay through all of the logs to get to my current state. Okay. I, I start off with essentially a snapshot event, yeah. and I play forward from that inside okay. my current log. Okay. There's a downside to this where if now I want to run a query across nine years' worth of accounting data, it, it becomes rather difficult to do yeah. one query that goes across all nine mm -hmm. because it essentially has to hit nine, uh, sorry, eight immutable stores and my current one. Okay, and what about the book? 
Uh, so the book is basically done on my side. Yeah. Um, it's uh, leanpub.com slash ES versioning. Yeah. Um, my work is done. I'm just waiting on editors and illustrators and the people to do the actual layouts. And uh, But you can actually read it for free online. There's actually, if you look underneath the table of contents link, there's a read for free online link. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thanks a lot for your time. And we hope you can enjoy the rest of the conference. And thanks. Yep. thanks See you.